Why News with William Theo, Angelo Castro III, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening. The Commission on Appointments postpones the confirmation of the appointment of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III today. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III faced the powerful Commission on Appointments or CA today. However, the DOH chief failed to get the nod of the members of the CA as several of them have expressed discontent with some of his answers. These include the issue on the Dengvaxia vaccines. With this, the committee suspended the hearing to give the Secretary the chance to prepare for the questions of the lawmakers. Uh, can you imagine how serious this is? No, We used 800,000 children as laboratory rats and guinea pigs. Yun libre, ha, yung bakuna. E yung mga bumili. Hindi pa natin nabibilang yan. So seryoso yan. In the course of the hearing, Duque denies the existence of a mafia within the agency. He also shed light on the issue of corruption within the DOH, particularly the alleged pocketing of 550 million pesos the government saved in the purchase of anti-dengue vaccines. However, his answer did not convince the CA members. The DOH, no, we must assume, give them the benefit of the doubt, no, is composed of professional, dedicated, career public servants. Biruin mo kung nasa, ang nasa isip ng publiko ay may mafia dyan. Hindi sasabihin lang kaya pala may namatay, may mga namamatay. I cannot second guess the uh, CA uh, whatever it is that uh, they uh, have picked up from uh, my answers to uh, their uh, manifold questions. All, uh, let's uh, respect the time that they need to make whatever decisions uh, is appropriate. The CA has yet to set a date on when to conduct a hearing on the confirmation of Duque as the DOH chief. Meanwhile, three individuals have listed themselves as oppositors of the nomination of Duque. These are Dr. Nestor Dizon Jr., Anti-Trapo Movement of the Philippines Chairperson Leon Peralta and David Diwa. However, only Dizon and Peralta attended today's hearing. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Meanwhile, several medical experts are worried that the public may lose confidence to other immunization programs of the Department of Health following the controversial Dengvaxia issue. Here's why from Aiko Miguel. The controversy on the Dengvaxia vaccine affects other immunization programs of the Department of Health. Some medical experts say the number of people getting vaccinated has dropped to 50 to 80 percent when the issue on Dengvaxia vaccine broke out. This prompted 58 doctors and scientists to release a position on the matter. Pag sinabi nilang bakuna day, punong-puno yung health center ng magpapabakuna. Ngayon, pag sinabi nila na bakuna day, halos walang nagpupunta. They argue adding to the fiasco are the differing statements and opinions of many individuals regarding the issue. They are also dismayed that the issue is tainting the credibility of experts, DOH officials, and even the health department due to the various accusations regarding the anti-dengue vaccine. Meanwhile, for former Health Secretary Esperanza Cabral, the DOH should complete the vaccination of Dengvaxia to those who have already received it. Dapat ay bigyan siya ng pagkakataon na makompleto niya yung three doses ng Dengvaxia kasi ang nangyari sa kanya ay na-expose siya sa lahat ng risks ng Dengvaxia pero ngayon ay nade-deprive siya ng full benefit ng vaccination. Eh dapat ibigay mo na sa kanya yung full benefit. The experts argue there is a bigger possibility of an outbreak of various diseases if people don't vaccinate to protect themselves from infectious disease like measles, flu, polio, yellow fever, HIV, and Japanese encephalitis. Nagsimula yun, parang mitya po yan, nadami yan. So yun po yung risk na pag bumaba yung immune status ng population, mabilis po magkaroon ng pagdami. Kasi isang kaso lang, maraming mahal. Secretary Duque, meanwhile, says he respects the opinion of various experts. However, he explains, it's better to wait first for the result of the assessment for the said vaccine and the clinical analysis of the children whose deaths are being linked to the Vaksha. In general, I think the, the position is sound. Uh, it's uh, something that uh, 
shouldn't be difficult to understand and therefore uh, make the necessary adjustments. <laughs> Where we think uh, certain uh, parts of the position paper may help us uh, address this controversy, then we will adapt. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The House of Representatives starts to hear the bill that aims to abolish the Energy Regulatory Commission. Meanwhile, ERC Chairman Agnes de Venadera admits the agency still cannot fully perform its functions. Here's why from Ray Pelayo. It is House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez himself who introduced the House Bill 5020 or an act abolishing the Energy Regulatory Commission or ERC. The explanatory notes states that it stemmed from the alleged corruption that was happening in the agency that led to the point when ERC Director Francisco Jose Villa Jr. took his life on November 9, 2017. The House Speaker notes that the suspicions raised against the integrity of the ERC cannot be ignored. As a regulatory body, the ERC is the one that approves the application of electric companies in implementing adjustments in electric bills and other issues concerning the energy sector. Aside from abolishing the agency, the bill includes the creation of the Board of Energy as an attached agency of the Department of Energy. However, ERC Chairperson Agnes de Venedera says she is against the bill. Instead of abolish, abolishing it, it should be even be strengthened because even in other countries, the trend of the regulatory offices or bodies, they remain to be independent. House Committee on Energy Chairman Lord Alan Velasco is pushing for the reorganization of the agency but have it remain as independent. I don't want the regulated being the regulator. Meanwhile, Devanadera expresses her concern on the performance of the agency following the suspension of all of its commissioners. They are now awaiting further action from Malacanya. The ERC chief adds that the commission is now studying possible measures on decreasing the price of electricity in the country. The United Filipino Consumers and Commuter, on the other hand, says electricity rates can be slashed by 50%. Ang sinasabi ng IPIRA ay dapat pababain yung halaga ng kuryente, pero kabaliktara na nangyayari. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. In other news, some groups suspect that there was a secret deal behind permission given to China to conduct marine research in Benham Rise. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. Experts do not want a repeat of the events in 2005 when the Philippines had a secret deal with China on a conduct of a joint seismic study on the disputed territory in the South China Sea between China and the Philippines' top oil companies. This has been a controversial issue and was believed to have compromised not only the Spratly's Islands but also even the undisputed territories of the country. Some experts appeal to the government to reveal the purpose as well as the scope of the marine scientific research conducted by China in the Philippine Rice or Benham Rice. A scientific work is a social activity. Yung secret dealings niyan, sana wag na tayong gumawa niyan. Broad strokes lang, para meron tayong basis for discerning whether okay. hanggap pa hindi. Please give us any and all data that will be available to us para hindi po tayo nagtatatalo. All right. The scholar adds that the government should not give information on the marine research by bits and pieces. UP Maritime Law expert Professor Jay Batong Bakal says it is important to show that the government is able to regulate the researches done by foreign scientists in our own seas. Dapat talaga uh, ang position natin lagi kaya sila nandyan ay dahil may pahintulog sila sa atin at dahil kontrolado yun kasi natin lahat ng activities dyan. Nire-regulate natin kasi yung activity na yan. No? At mayroon tayong mga appropriate safeguards dyan. Meanwhile, Magdalo Party List Representative Gary Alejano files a resolution to conduct an inquiry on government processes in issuing permission to foreign scientists before conducting marine research in Philippine seas. This is aside from the resolution submitted by Makabayan Bloc to conduct an investigation on the marine scientific research of China in Benham Rice. Gusto natin malaman, maging trans, uh, yung information, na binibigay na permit sa lahat ng nagkakandak ng MSRs. Ihinahanap po natin at hanggang ngayon hindi po na-provide sa public. UNTV still awaits the statement of Malacanang on the issue. 
Rosalicos, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. MRT3 General Manager Rodolfo Garcia has been almost cited in contempt after he walked out of the hearing of Congress on the glitches of MRT. Garcia and House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez also had a heated exchange during the said hearing. Here's why from Joe Anano. Then I will resign kung hindi ako sigurado. Ay gusto mo mag-resign na ako ngayon na. This has been the dare of Metro Rail Transit General Manager Rodolfo Garcia to House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez amid the hearing of the House Committee on Transportation earlier on the glitches happening at the MRT3. Garcia raised his voice after Speaker Alvarez questioned his ability to fix the operation of MRT. According to Garcia, he has been focusing on the testing of 48 Dalian trains. He says four of these can already be used for operation. However, Alvarez questioned Garcia's statement. The lawmaker argues the Dalian trains are not compatible with the rails of MRT and are dangerous to use. We are looking at the Dalian train kung magagamit namin ito. Hindi nga pwede yan. Hindi nga match ang signaling. Hindi mo pa ba alam hanggang ngayon yan? Amid the heated exchange, Garcia attempted to walk out. However, several lawmakers stopped him. Some congressmen defended the House Speaker and recommended to cite Garcia in contempt for his behavior. Speaker po yung nagsasalita who is the head of the third branch of government. Huwag niyo kaming ginaganyan dito. Hindi namin kayo palalabasin dito. Kung gusto mo, ikulong ka namin dito. Garcia calmed down after talking with House Majority Floor Leader Rodolfo Fariñas. Shortly afterwards, the MRT General Manager apologized to Alvarez. Because of this, the lawmakers withdraw its plan to cite him in contempt. Medyo pressure na pa ako sa SGM. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. I'm really contemplating of uh, thank you. going out. The Department of Transportation has once again assured to the public that it is doing all it can to fix the MRT-3. DOTR Undersecretary for Rails, Timothy John Batan, says the spare parts the government ordered will arrive in February, which will then pave way for the start of the repair of some MRT trains. He says the government continues to hold talks with the Japanese government regarding the planned takeover of the Sumitomo to the maintenance and rehabilitation of MRT. Pag nagumpisan pumasok yung spare parts, isa-isahin na nating iakyat yung mga tren na hindi natin may yakyat dahil sa kakulangan ng spare parts. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Jeepney drivers believe that the, the intensified inspection of the Land Transportation Office for vehicle registration is causing them trouble. Rajel Adora will tell us why. The Tanggal Bulok Tanggal Uso campaign of the government does not end with just restricting the daily operation of public utility jeepneys. Even the renewal of the registration of public utility vehicles and heavy trucks at the Land Transportation Office is just twice as hard and twice as strict. Some jeepney drivers say that the intensified inspection now being conducted by the LTO is only causing them much trouble. According to them, it is a big sacrifice to line up for inspection and not being able to earn for the day. Magsang yung oso, 2.5. Kailangan, papalinis talaga yung... Walang oso. Ano yung plano nyo kayo siya? Eh, linis muna, tapos balik dito. Sa smoke lang po. Ayun, preno na ako. Walang problema ako. Some of the drivers whose vehicle did not pass today's inspection will have to go back for another try after having their vehicles fixed. Kagabi eh. Alas 8, umalis na kami ng bahay. Dumating kami 9.30. Hanggang ngayon, wala kaming tulog. Sakripisyo talaga. Pang-apat na araw na ako namamalat. Pang-apat na araw ko na rito. But according to Fernando Elio, Chief of LTO NCR Law Enforcement Unit, the government is serious in its implementation of the Tanggal Bulok, Tanggal Uso campaign. Mas pinag-iting pa po natin yung ating operasyon kontra nga doon sa mga bulok na sasakyan or bulok na, may bulok na pyesa ng sasakyan. Elio says they are also conducting internal cleansing in their unit. Sa ngayon, wala na po talaga yung magbibigay, maglalagay para lang po mapalusot yung mga ganyang gawain. Due to the strict inspections conducted today, a long line of the vehicles has occupied one lane of the three lanes of the East Avenue in Quezon City and has reached the elliptical road. The inspection and registration for public utility vehicles and heavy trucks with plate numbers ending with 1 is extended to Friday, February 2. 
Vehicles that did not pass the inspection and still could not register on the said date will be meted a penalty. The inspection service of LTO in Quezon City and Basay City operates from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. Rigel Adora, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology of FIVOX recorded today fewer activities of Mount Mayon. However, FIVOX is still discounting the possibility of a major eruption in the following days. Joan Nano will tell us why. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, records only two explosions within the past 24 hours. However, FIVOX is still not discounting the possibility of a major eruption as the volcano remains active. Ito nga po yung mga continuous na rumbling sounds na rin natin. It's uh, part of yung, or evidence na yung nga may magma kumakyat. Yung nga rin po, continuous pa rin yung lava flow. Meanwhile, some residents living in towns near the volcano are extremely worrying of the thick ash fall from the Mount Mayon. By this time, I am so anxious about it because the, the ash fall is um, right towards uh, my hometown, which is the first district of Albay. So I worry so much that we may now experience what the towns of Kamali, Ginubatan, and some parts of Daraga are experiencing right now. Almost everyone from the town of Kamalig is wearing face masks. They are also worried with the possible effects to their health of the ash fall. This ash fall affected mostly our uh, uh, plants, the uh, farmlands, and also our living, uh, especially, especially the, uh, the health of the children, and also the old ones, what we call the senior citizens of this uh, locality. Residents in the local government unit are cooperating in cleaning up their surroundings that are covered with ash. The ash is cause uh, respiratory ailments to the people, so we clean the sidewalks. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The provincial government of Albay is studying the possibility of allowing the return of residents to their homes located within the 8 to 9 kilometer danger zone from Mount Mayon. Monokson will tell us why. Local officials also admit being unable to sustain the food supply needed by evacuees. Should the Mayon volcano continues to show signs of improvement, the provincial government of Albay might decide to allow the evacuees to return to their homes located within the designated 8 to 9 kilometer danger zone. The local government says the plan would help the congest evacuation centers and to sustain the need for food of the thousands of evacuees. However, according to Governor Al Francis Bichara, their decision will still depend on the observations of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX. Yeah, alert level 3, kung ibaba nila, then uh, yung 8 to 9, pwede na mag-COE yan. But yung 6 to 7, I think we'll have to maintain them for a while. FIVOX says Mount Mayon has released about 50% of its lava deposit. With this, the agency is expecting the condition of the volcano to improve. Governor Bichara admits that if the current situation remains unchanged until the next three months, the local government would not be able to sustain the need for food of the evacuees. In terms of fund, the existing budget of the provincial government for the food of evacuees is enough for two months only. This is why the local government is calling for additional financial aid from various organizations. For now, more than 80,000 individuals or 20,000 families are staying at evacuation centers. The local government allots 200 pesos for the food of each family. This means the local government of Albay spends more than 4 million pesos daily for food of the evacuees. We really have to maintain the supply. Kasi pag uh, napalampasan mo isa dalawang araw, Eh, hindi lang may anong mag-alboroto, pati yung tao mag-alboroto rin. Earlier, local officials of Albay received 50 million peso worth of financial aid from President Rodrigo Duterte. This is aside from the 25 million pesos the president gave last Monday. 
the province of Albay is also waiting for the 35 million pesos additional aid from the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office or PCSO, which has been requested by the president himself from PCSO board member Sandra Kam. Since day one, the provincial government already received a total of 27 million pesos from various private organizations. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Ligaspi City, Albay. Several residents living near Mount Mayon are worried with the possibility of another lahar flow from the volcano, like what happened during the onslaught of Typhoon Reming in 2006. Here's why from Grace Cassin. Fibox explained that they're not discounting the possibility that lahar flow may happen again. However, there are certain parameters to look into. Dr. Ed Laguerta, the senior science specialist of Fibox, recalls he was also on duty during the occurrence of lahar flow in 2006. He explains there was a volume of rainwater which lasted for several days. This, he said, triggered the saturation of soil around Mount Mayon where tons of volcanic materials were stored. Pagkatapos ng Reming, na, nahukay niya lahat ng hanggang sa pinaka, uh, yung pin, mga uh, scourable materials. Yung ibig sabihin yung medyo sandy. Kaya lang, sa side, hindi naman mawawala yun eh. So, pwede pa rin. Kaya hanggat nandyan yung slope ng mayon, lalo na kung mag-deviate sa ibang channel, hindi, mo, hindi mawawala ng source. It was in 2006 when Typhoon Reming hit the Bicol region. With a strength of 240 to 260 kilometers per hour, it wreaked havoc in the areas around the Mount Volcano which triggered a lahar or mud flow. Salvacion Banania of Barangay Padang, Legazpi City, Albay are among those who survived the flow of lahar huge rocks that came from the slopes of Mayon Volcano. The lahar flow killed 500 people and damaged the properties of almost 140,000 families. More than a decade had already passed, but the tragic incidents remains fresh in the mind of Salvacion. Eighty-year-old Mercedes, who was the barangay captain at the time, recalls the moment Typhoon Reming wreaked havoc in their town. He said there was a happy town. There was a lot of homes. It was before the lahar flow about to progress. But in just blink of an eye, everything was gone because of the lahar flow. Ano ba kayo nung sa arong dyan? Tapos, ito nga ni, pag kuyang kang rimeng, this is the Typhoon Reming Memorial Shrine in Padang Legazpi, Albay, built as a memorial for those who were buried in mud when Typhoon Reming hit Bicol in November of 2006. Ano ang palaya na, dati palayan yun, doon sila, may isang na, nadala. Salvacion is one of the families worried every time the Mount Mayon shows signs of abnormalities during rainfall. Based on the calculation of Pag-asa, Typhoon Reming brought 464 mm of water in just a day, which was equivalent to one month volume of rainwater. This triggered the flow of old materials in the surroundings of Mount Mayon. Possible po, kapag um, depende po kung halimbawa nagkaroon po tayo ng ganun ng category na, na bagyo na mayroon siyang maraming uh, moisture content na dala. Authorities remind the public to heed the reminders and warnings of government agencies to avoid a repeat of the tragic incident. Grace Gaston, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Department of Health encourages residents in the extended 9-kilometer danger zone to use face masks as shield from ash fall. My Bermudez is in Albay to tell us why live. Yes, Mai, go ahead. 
Yes, Darlene, in the latest update released by the Department of Health in Bicol Region, residents or acute respiratory infection or ARI still the top health concern of evacuees in Albay with 64% followed by fever and hypertension. With this, according to the agency, residents should take extra caution, most especially for those within the extended 9-kilometer danger zone. The Regional Health Office issues advisory for Albay residents to avoid contracting respiratory diseases due to the ash coming from Mayon Volcano. The advisory says it will be safer for residents to use cloth and N95 masks that they are distributing. A face mask made of cotton or cloth costs 20 pesos per piece. An N95 mask commonly used for infection control also costs 20 pesos. DOH explains the commonly used disposable surgical masks are made of layers of very thin fabric which can still be penetrated by ashful particles. Aside from lessening the possibility of ash inhalation by residents, cloth and N95 masks are also washable and can be used several times over. In the whole of Beagle region, supplies of 11,000 N95 masks and 1,000 cloth masks were already distributed by the DOH. Hindi rin naman talaga namin mabibigay lahat yung face mask sa lahat ng tao na affected ng ash fall kasi marami sila. But for now, yung mga sa evacuation centers po, nabigyan na sila. Training centers in several Albay and Sorsogon towns are expected to produce 20,000 cloth masks for residents which are thicker compared to the ones commonly purchased in stores. Initially, nagkaroon ng 25 trainees na nag undergo ng training at the same time, nagpo-produce nga sila ng mga face masks. Magkakaroon sila ng initial production nila is 400 face masks and tinitingnan doon is yung... Output nila is ipamimigay din mismo doon sa mga evacuees. Yung iba naman, um, ibibenta. May tatlo kaming referral hospitals sa ng uh, So we have the BRTTH, tapos yung Ziga, and then yung sa 3rd District. Yes, Darlene, in case the threat of explosion of Mayon will Thank you, my Bermudez reporting from Albay. Meanwhile, Presidential Political Advisor Attorney Francis Tolentino met with the country's city mayors and have them commit to adopt a municipality in Albay that was affected by the said calamity. Muntin Lupa will adopt Daraga, Tagaytay will adopt the town of Ginubatan, Kaluokan, the towns of Tabaco and Malilipot. Quezon City, the towns of Bakakay and Ligao, and Pasay City will adopt the town of Santo Tomas. Tolentino also tapped other, other government agencies to serve as camp managers to each affected municipality. The DOH is assigned as camp manager for the municipality of Kamalig, DSWD for Ginobatan, DepEd for Tabaco City. Dole for Ligao, DA for Santo Domingo, DNR for Bakakay, DOST for Malilipot, DPWH for Daraga, and DILG for Ligaspi. The Bureau of Corrections confirms that illegal drug trade inside the new believed prison continues. Astronomy enthusiasts flock the Pag-asa Atmospheric Observatory for this, this evening's Once in a Blue Moon event called the Super Blue Blood Moon. Why News will be right back. The Bureau of Corrections confirms that illegal drug trade inside the new Belibid prison continues. Grace Cassin will tell us why. In today's hearing of the House of Representatives, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA confirms that convicted drug lords can still sell illegal drugs despite detained at the new Belibid prison. PDEA is now investigating new players in the drugs trade who are Chinese nationals. 
PDA report shows that most of the illegal drugs they confiscated came from the NBP. What is happening inside Bilibid is yung transaction lang po ng, ng illegal drugs. The Bureau of Corrections and the PNP Special Action Force admit they failed to put a stop on the bringing in of cell phones inside the NBP. That's why drug lords can still transact and sell drugs outside prison. The transactions or telephone communications, that's all that is, that is happening inside the New Believer Prison, but there is actually no prolification inside. While we implement strict, uh, strictly, the, the policies dun sa en entrances, uh, we have to admit na araw-araw, sir, may nakukuha pa rin mga cellphone from the inside. Buker also admits that cell phone jammers installed inside NBP are not working properly. Marami na po kasi tayo, ma'am, jammer na sira ho. Sira. Yeah. Well, dahil nga, ang problem ho dyan, walang capital outlay, no? Wala ang procurement. Also, one of the problems was the lack of personnel to guard the NPP. Ang new belief po for one instance, sa isang araw ng, aliba, gabi, 12-8 po na shift, wala nang opisina, wala na rin ibang gwardiya. Ang nandun na lang po, siguro mga 20, 20 personnel, including their officials. Imagine, sir, ang laman ng bilibid, 17,000, ang nag-handle 20. The House is set to conduct another hearing to determine what measures to take to solve the problem. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Quezon City Police District arrested 17 drug personalities while the Manila Police nabbed five individuals in anti-illegal drug operations today. Here's why from Asher Kadapan Jr. 17 individuals were caught in the act of using and selling illegal drugs at a drug den in Barangay Old Balara, Quezon City at 2 a.m. today. One of those arrested by the Quezon City Police District Station 6 was Reya Salenga, an allegedly notorious illegal drug peddler in the area. For almost two weeks na pag-surveillance natin, nakita natin na marami siya pinapasaan. Meron ding maliit na pesto. Pagdating niya sa second floor, meron din siyang kwarto doon na kung saan doon din gumagamit ng mga parokya. The suspect refused to comment on the accusation. The police also arrested retired policeman Rodolfo Aspril from the said drug den. Aspril denies using illegal drugs, claiming he had just dropped by at the room of Salenga when the police conducted the operation. Meanwhile, the Manila police nabbed five drug suspects in a buy-bust operation at a drug den in Tondo, Manila at 9 in the evening last night. The operation targeted a certain Frankie Reyes, a known shabu peddler in the area. Before his arrest, Reyes was able to escape authorities by jumping to a river after noticing that he was transacting with police operatives. Aside from Reyes, four individuals caught using illegal drugs were also arrested. The Manila police say the drug suspects surrendered under the previous Oplan Tokang but did not stop their vice. Authorities also seized three sachets of suspected shabu from them. They will face charges for violating the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The newly appointed Philippine National Police spokesperson asks the help of legitimate media in battling fake news. He believes fake and sensationalized news can tear down an organization. Victor Cosare is back to tell us why. The newly appointed spokesperson of the Philippine National Police admits that the position he is now handling poses him a big challenge. But on his first day as the voice of the PNP, he promised to fight fake news and propaganda. PNP spokesperson and PNP Public Information Office Chief, Police Chief Superintendent Jan Bulalakaw, believes that information is powerful and asks for the help of the legitimate media to fight fake news. Information that is properly managed is reflective of a leadership that is not only responsible, mature, and accountable, but also one that conveys integrity, sincerity, and clarity of vision and purpose. 
He says it is important to help the public distinguish the real news from those who just want to deceive. Bulalakaw adds he will be more transparent and open to the public. Dapat, we should be able to help the public in distinguishing uh, truth from propaganda, facts from fake news, objectivity and impartiality from sensationalism and demagoguery. Prior to his appointment, Bulalakaw served as the regional directorial staff of the National Capital Region Police Office. Bulalakaw is a member of the Philippine Military Academy Maringal Class of 1988. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Solicitor General Jose Calida pushes for the reform of the Office of the Solicitor General. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Six proposed bills are filed in the Senate that seek for the amendment of the Charter of the Office of the Solicitor General. These include the proposal to add more division that will handle the agency's pending cases, which the Solgen is pushing to get Senate support. The mammoth task of uh, representing the entirety of the government will be addressed by the creation of additional 20 divisions to perform the functions of the OGCC and PCGG. The OSG's primary mandate is to represent the government and its officials, government line and attached agencies, and government-owned and controlled corporations in Supreme Court and Court of Appeals in all criminal proceedings. The Solgen, by the instruction of the President, may represent the Republic of the Philippines in international litigations, conferences and negotiations where legal position of the country is needed. For some senators, there are provisions in the current charter of the OSG that should be reviewed on the possibility of conflict of interest. When he acts both as counsel of government line agencies and now as super as counsel for the uh, government corporations. Currently, there are more than 700,000 cases in the OSG handled only by 268 lawyers of the agency. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The Spanish national arrested in Basilan for illegal possession of explosives has denied links to the terrorist group, saying he is just a tourist. Here's why from Roderick Mendoza. He is just a tourist and not a terrorist. This is what the 20-year-old Spanish national has to say in response to the charges filed against him before the Department of Justice. Assisted by a lawyer from the public attorney's office, Abdel Hakim Labidi Adib submitted his counter-affidavit and sought the dismissal of illegal possession of explosive complaint. He denies owning the bag which the Army Special Forces claimed to contain two grenades and other components of an explosive device. He says he has no links to Abu Sayyaf or other Islamic terrorist groups and that he is an atheist. He is young, that's why he is adventurous. He, he was in Basilan because of a friend. He knew in Cagayan de Oro. Adib narrates he was just walking with a male companion when he was arrested in Basilan. He says he only knew him as Abu Zaid, whom he met in Cagayan de Oro City. Also, there was no checkpoint, and the two of them were arrested and the military took their bag. This is contrary to the claim of the army that his companion escaped from the checkpoint. Uh, he has a guide, he has a companion. During the time he was arrested, but that companion is already gone, and he was not, uh, he was not charged of anything. Adib admits he had the idea of going to the Philippines for a long time. After hearing positive reviews about tourist destinations in the country and the Filipino hospitality, he says Abu Zaid invited him to visit the Yakan tribe in the jungles of Basilan, and he agreed. He has nothing to do with them. And that is merely a hearsay because there's no evidence. He said that at first, they were nice to him, but some people in the tribe took his cell phone, money, and other personal belongings. Finding the place uncomfortable, he decided to go home and got arrested while on his way to Zamboanga. The DOJ prosecutor has now submitted his case for resolution. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. 
The northeast monsoon is affecting northern and central Luzon. Strong to gale force winds associated with the surge of northeast monsoon weakened but are still expected to affect the seaboards of northern Luzon. Cloudy skies with scattered rains will prevail over northern Luzon. Meanwhile, Davao region and Sok Sargen will experience cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms due to a trough of a low-pressure area or LPA. And astronomy enthusiasts flock the Pagasa Atmospheric Observatory for the Super Blue Blood Moon. Maki Libradilla is in Pagasa to tell us why live. Good evening. Good evening, William. At this time, the super blue blood moon can now be... Good evening, William. The super blue blood moon at uh, this time can now be viewed even by the naked eye across the country. And here in... Uh, uh, Pag-asa Astronomical Observatory, hundreds are lined up to take a better view of the super blue blood moon. The Pag-asa Astronomical Observatory in Quezon City this evening opens its doors to astronomy enthusiasts for a free viewing of the super blue blood moon. Seven high-end telescopes were set up here to give the viewers better vantage point. This is aside from the Goto telescope or the giant telescope that can also be used to view the ones in a blue moon astronomical phenomenon. Pagasa says the super blue blood moon is also visible to the naked eye or even without using telescopes. The penumbral eclipse or the first phase of the lunar eclipse happened at 6.49 p.m. followed by a partial eclipse at 7.48 p.m. The total lunar eclipse on the other hand is expected to take place at 9.29 p.m. where the blood moon can be fully seen. The moon will seem to turn red due to the atmospheric refraction that will cover the Earth's shadow to the moon. The blood moon will last for one, hot, one hour and 16 minutes. A partial eclipse is expected to happen again from 11 until midnight tonight. And that is the latest here at the Pag-asa Observatory. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Maki Libradilla, live from Pag-asa, Quezon City. Coming up on Y News. U.S. President Donald Trump opens a pathway to citizenship for 1.8 million illegal immigrants in exchange for border wall. West Minister highlights Chinese origin dog breeds in the annual show. More from Y News after this break. Meanwhile, the super blue blood moon phenomenon is actually a triple threat for Australians. Let's get to know why from Abel Siliano, who is at Herta Reserve in Perth, Australia, live. Go ahead, Abel. All Perth residents, yes, all Perth residents are enjoying a rare spectacle. Okay. Stop. Second, 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 wait now. Residents are enjoying a rare spectacle, the super blue blood moon. Though some vantage points will be better than others, the best places in Western Australia are anywhere outside, facing northeast. Consisting of a total lunar eclipse, super moon and blue moon, such an event hasn't been seen for more than 30 years. According to the Bureau of Meteorology, those in Melbourne's eastern suburbs will have the best view. Here at Stirling Herd of Reserve, more than 90,000 people have registered their interest for the free total lunar eclipse viewing organized by Gravity Discovery Center. As it enters the depths of Earth's shadows, you can expect the moon to turn a deep red due to the Earth's atmosphere interacting with the sun's light. 
Thus, it is a type of eclipse also known as a blood moon. Here in Perth, the eclipse has started at 7.48 p.m. and will end at 11.11 .11 p.m. As of this moment, we are about to see the totality of it which will start at 8.51 p.m. and ends at 10.08 p.m. That's the latest update here in Perth, Australia. Back to you, Will. Thank you, Abel Siliano, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Various groups conduct various activities this month to promote Bible reading. Robbie de Guzman tells us why. Alongside the National Bible Month, some groups conducted various activities to share God's Word. These include the Youth Organization Bible Reader Society, together with the members Church of God International. The group went around Metro Manila and other parts of the country to give Bibles. Matagal na pong ginagawa po ng Bread Society ang pamimigay ng Biblia at pag-encourage sa mga taong magbasa ng Biblia uh, all year round, kumbaga hindi lang siya pagka-January. Uh, kumbaga nagkataon lang na kumbaga ngayon is National uh, Bible Month Celebration so mas inintensify lang po ni Bread Society ang kampanya na makapagbigay po ng mga babasahin, especially po Bible. Bread Society and MCGI went to the public libraries, schools and government offices for this purpose. Nakakatuwa na nagbigay kayo nito kasi alam naman natin kung gaano ka-importante ang salita ng Diyos sa, sa community. Madaming makakagamit nito at hopefully madaming yung mga nagugulumihanan, mga kailangan ng kasagutan at guidance sa buhay nila, makagamit nito. In behalf of uh, the provincial government of Cavite, maraming maraming salamat. At makakatulong po ito sa mga bumibisita po sa ating provincial library na nagpupunta po dito ang uh, madaming mga estudyante mula po dito sa ating lalawigan. Apart from this, Bread Society and MCGI also donated wall clocks and the blog compilation magazines of Brother Eli Soriano. Dati ipinagpapasalamat palagi naman sa Panginoon ang pagkakataong tayo po ay uh, uh, nakapagpapatuloy dun sa advokasya ni Brother El Soriano and of course ni Kuya Daniel Rason na maipagpatuloy yung kampanya ng uh, pagbabalita ng salita ng Diyos sa buong mundo. Napakahalaga po kasi na ang tao ay mamungkahi natin na mag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos sa Biblia. Ito ang pinakamagandang solusyon para ang tao hindi na di-depress, para ang tao ay laging mayroong pag-asa at higit sa lahat makagawa ng mabuti sa bawat pabuting pagkakataong dumarating sa atin. The National Bible Month ends today, but these groups believe that God's words should be proclaimed all throughout the year because every day should be a Bible day. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. And those are the reasons behind the news. January 31st, 2018, I am William Theo. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I am Angelo Castro III. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why, why News. news?